Hello and welcome to my channel, I went to lose gaming. The doggo general with the fluffiest tail on Watatsumi Island has finally arrived as a playable character. In this video, we'll be taking a look at roughly what is possible for a Constellation Zero Goro. So I'm finally back from my short vacation and we'll be starting off with a Constellation Zero Goro Showcase. Sadly, the iron is no longer hot for our Doggo General, but I feel like it's absolutely compulsory to do a Constellation Zero Showcase for every new character. Anyway, let's start off by taking a look at my Goro and his build. My Goro in this video will be using a few different military strategies. The first one is a pure support build with a Favonius bow and the four piece Noblesse Oblige. I think I swapped around some artifacts here or there throughout the video, but just know that it doesn't really matter for this build. This build is focused on crit rate and energy recharge to maximize his support capabilities. The next build is a feeble attempt to make him do damage with a four piece Husk of Opulent Dreams. I use a few different weapons for the damage showcase portion. He is at Constellation Zero throughout this video, and his talents are at 1, 8, and 6. Before continuing though, I recommend only bringing your Goro up to Ascension 5, which is 70 out of 80. This opens up level 8 talents for his elemental skill, and is honestly more than enough investment into your Goro. However, this changes if you have Constellation 4 Goro, and you want to maximize healing. As for me, well, I bring all my new characters to level 90, and that's why he's at level 90. Anyway, let's start off by taking a look at how much great drainage he does with his support build. Yeah, not at all great to be honest. Well, it looks like our doggo general barked up the wrong tree today. So instead of focusing on his damage with this support build, let's instead see how much he can boost some defense scaling Geo characters. In total, my Goro's build provides 330 flat defense, 15% Geo damage both from his level 8 elemental skill, 25% defense from his first passive while using a burst, and 20% attack from the Noblesse Oblige. In the left clip, we can see that my Constellation Zero Ito with a Refinement 1 Red Horn Slasher without the Doggo buff is hitting for 26,892 damage with an Arataki Keizigiri Combo Slash. And in this right clip, Ito is hitting for 34,789 damage. This is actually perfectly in line with my Goro calculations from my Arataki Ito Guide video, which if you haven't seen, I recommend checking out. This ends up being a 29.37% boost to Ito's damage through Goro's Burst. Now, a Red Horn Slasher Ito is arguably the largest beneficiary of Goro's buff. So let's instead take a look at how much he buffs arguably the worst beneficiary, who is also a defense scaling Geo character, which happens to be a White Blind Noel. Even with the excessive defense saturation thanks to the White Blind stacks, Goro's buff still buffed her damage from 16,036 to 20,149, a 25.65% increase to her damage. While not as impressive as Ito's 29% damage gain, this is still a great way to boost Noel's damage. Next we have Albedo. Albedo sits somewhere in between Ito and Noel's expected damage buff, and his highest blossom hit, while the Cryo Regis Vine has less than 50% HP, ended up going from 25,977 damage to 33,271 damage, which is a 28.0% damage gain for Albedo's blossom damage. So in summary, even a Constellation Zero Goro with minimum investment can buff Noel, Ito, and Albedo's damage significantly by around 24 to 29%. Let's press pause on his support capabilities and instead take a look at his insane damage. We'll start with the free-to-play weapon, the Prototype Crescent, as well as the aforementioned four-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams. Well, he is able to hit for over 14,000 damage with his elemental skill, and each tick of his burst is critting for over 6k. Unfortunately, this is nothing to write home to Kokumi. But what if we cranked up his damage with a Refinement 5 Polar Star, and a team, and some food? Well, 
he was miraculously able to barely destroy the Cry of Regisfine within a single Q window. What a rough performance. But wait, let's now give him a crit damage build and go for some crit fishing. After we knock down the Perpetual Mechanical Array and buff Goro's damage as much as I possibly can, my Goro was able to achieve an outrageously evil 666 42 damage per thumbnail. Now frankly that was a lot of effort to make my Constellation Zero Goro do any semblance of damage. It's clear that Goro's kit was not intended to output an insane amount of damage. So instead, let's see how Goro does as a substitute for various other characters in certain team comps. Starting with this Noel Geo Traveler core. This team does not have Goro, and instead has a sub DPS Favonius Emblem of Severed Fates Geo Traveler. Here we can see that this team is easily able to handle 1212 and it took them 35 seconds and 49 frames to complete this chamber. But now let's try replacing my Favonius Geo Traveler with my support Goro. Interestingly, my Noel spin went from 27,379 damage to 29,246 damage. For some reason, only being a 6.8% increase in her damage. Perhaps something is a bit off in my rotation here that led to such a small gain from Goro's buffs. If you spot the discrepancy with this, let me know. Anyway, this Goro's team is fairly competitive to the Traveler variation and ended up completing this chamber in 39 seconds and 25 frames, just a few seconds slower than the previous team. Now let's compare my support Goro to a Festering Desire Bennett on an Albedo Ito team. In summary, for these two runs, Goro actually provided a larger damage boost to Ito than Bennett did, going from 60,194 for his slam all the way up to 63,946 damage. And because Goro also buffs Albedo's Blossom damage as well, replacing Bennett with Goro in this situation led to a faster clear time of 28 seconds and 47 frames versus the Bennett team of 31 seconds and 24 frames. Now it's super important to note that the difference in times between the Noel and Ito runs can be attributed to so many other factors and this is in no means conclusive. But it's great to see here that Goro is a very competitive support, even some of the best support options for their respective teams. However, it's worth noting that the Ito Goro team in this example does not have a healer, unless Goro is at Constellation 4, or I guess Zhongli is at Constellation 6. Anyway, with all that being said and done, it's looking like Goro is unsurprisingly a solid support character for the three other defense scaling Geo characters in Genshin Impact. Unfortunately, as of right now, he appears to be powerful at doing damage. But in a way, this is a good thing as it allows for very cheap builds with a Noblesse set with some crit rate and energy recharge and a Favonius bow being all you really need. So there you go, my Constellation Zero review of the brand new Doggo General Goro. Are you planning to build your Goro if you happen to have him? Let me know what you think about Watatsumi's Islands, Military Commander in the comments below. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos ranging from Caesar showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.